at 10 minutes to 7 this week, I think it was on Monday, I woke up. If you have your notebooks and stuff, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I need to get a drink. Oh, yeah. Mm, nothing like water. I woke up out of a sound sleep hearing this voice speaking this. And I, and I knew it was for this body. If you need a notebook, there's some notebooks back there in the bookshelf because I, I really feel it's, uh, it's important to take notes. Uh, I, I mean, I go over my notes what God's given to me. So if you need note paper, there's notebooks back in that bookshelf back by the men's bathroom. There's pens everywhere. Just help yourself. Um, it was a very serious, a very serious voice. All right, and you know when you're in a sound sleep, all of a sudden you hear the sound, this really strong voice of the Lord talking to you. You go, boom. okay, your eyeballs bug out, and you're still sleeping, but you're looking for a piece of paper, okay. And if and I, I encourage you, folks, that if you have the visitations in the nighttime, uh, have a pen and paper next to your bed. I have that. Um, it's amazing. Uh, when this happened to me, it's it's like still dark in the bedroom, and I'm just my eyes are closed and I'm writing. Okay. You ever written with your eyes closed, Phyllis still asleep? You ought to see this piece of paper. You can almost read what it says. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, glory to God, you better give this back to me when I look at these hieroglyphics because there ain't no interpretation coming. But uh, what it was was that the Lord, and I did, I, the Lord re- reestablished it to me. He says, and this is what he's speaking over this body, so I really want you to get this in your spirit. To live out, to live out of, and that's the key word, to live out of, not just to live out like you're doing it, but to live out of the full potential of the call upon your life To live out of the full potential of the call upon your life will take every ounce of Christ within you and then some. I got to sit down. Ah. I'll tell you, when this thing hit me, it took my breath away. It's an exhortation and a warning at the same time. To live out of the full potential of the call upon your life will take every ounce of Christ within you and then some. Think about what that is, what's being said there. It's not just to live out, I can't sit down. There's just too much movement inside of me. To live out of the fullness of, is what we're called to do. You can live out a life scratching out an existence. You know what I'm saying? Scratching out your existence in your life. You can live out a life for Christ. But to live out of the full potential of the call upon your life is what my heart's desire is. I want to be so full and overflowing with what God's got inside of me that I'm living on the high side of the surf. I'm on the very crest of the wave. I'm not just kind of paddling along trying to catch something to carry me. I'm on the rip-roaring tip of that wave, and it's propelling me forward. And I'm hanging on and screaming for all that it's worth because I know that it's going to be a wild ride, and I'm in a safe place because God's got me right where I'm at. That's living out of the full potential. Of what? Living out of the full what? Of my call. So here we go. To break this down, the first part is the call upon our life. The call upon our life. Every one of us in this room has a destiny and purpose and a dream that God desires for you to step into, experience, and and show forth his greatness, his glory, and his love for you. Do you believe that? 
It takes tenacity and boldness to say, you know what? Yeah, I, I do believe that. And then there's no devil in hell that's going to change my mind about that. And I've set my face like flint, and I've put, put myself upon the cornerstone, Jesus Christ, and I will not be moved because I am a living stone that has been placed in this place with other folks, the other people in this tribe, to be a vessel to carry his glory and honor and, bring, and just release all that he has potentially in us. We're tied together not just because we're friends. We're tied together spiritually. We're not just tied together in this house. We're knit together with other pieces of the body in Redmond. Okay? There is a natural flow, and, I'm, and this is where the Lord is really pressing us into, is to start looking and seeing all the little veins and all the little roots that are, he's tying the body of Christ together, the, the church of Redmond together in, so that we can flow and work properly and not be a bunch of divided pieces all fighting with each other and feeling like there's a competition between us all. Because that's the stupid idiot lie of the enemy. That is not what God has at all for us. So the call upon our life, we've got to get the big picture. The big picture is found in Matthew 28, 18. Does my lovely wife back there, or did she just get raptured out of there? Okay. Okay, all right, she'll be back. Matthew 28, 18. I, I, did, I pulled the trigger before she was in the holster, or out of the holster, I should say. I about shot myself in the foot. And with the, with the gun I carry, you don't want to do that. So if you've got your Bibles, Matthew 28, 18. All right. Oh, there she is. Wow. The Lord delivered her back to her position. There she is. She's missed. All right, here we go. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, oh, you've got to say this with me, folks. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. How much is it? All. Who has any other one? None. The devil has no authority unless you give it to him. And he is all about tricking you into doing that. If he can persuade you, if he can move you to release your authority back to him. It's what he did with Adam and Eve. Tricked him, bang. He got the authority. Oh, hello. He, he ran out of there jingling the keys. And Adam and Eve are going, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jesus comes, kicks devil butt. Boom, bangs, everything's fixed. Takes the keys back. Okay, what's he do? He says, all authorities be given to me. On heaven and earth. It's mine. You are part of me. I am the head. You are my body. What are we to do? To walk out him on the earth continually. If we are his body, he is still here. That's a, that's a wild concept. But you have to be attached to the head to be properly working on, the, on, on this earth. Otherwise, you're just the zombie thing. With no brains and no just the yucky stuff. Okay? So you have to be attached to the body. And you have to be attached to the head. So as this body is attached with others, God is positioning us. We have Bobby Hobby's church. We've got some others that God is apostolically tying us together with. There's other ministries that God is knitting our hearts with. And we're seeing all this really cool stuff happening. So the Great Commission. Bring me up to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. All authority on heaven and earth, is in his hand. Mark 16, 15 through 18. Now, he has all authority. Now he's going to start delegating. Ooh, there's a word. Okay, delegated authority. Okay, a lot of times people use that as a cop-out because they don't want to deal with something. They just delegate it to you. You go out and clean the horse stalls. Use that pitchfork. You know how to use a shovel. Go do it. Because I just got nice clothes on. I don't want to deal with it. That's the wrong way of delegating, okay? Delegating from Christ's perspective is, you know what? I have designed you and made you to do this. You will thrive and you will have joy, and it is the essence of who you are. So now, because I have all authority on heaven and earth, I am sending you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. 
In my name they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover as it is done in my name. Not prideful, not arrogance, not assumption, in my name. What did Jesus do? He went up to the mountain, prayed, and he says, I only do what I see my Father doing. So that's doing it in his name. How do you get that? Well, do you wander around looking for something? No, you get in the prayer closet, you get in the secret place, you go, okay, let me see what's going to happen. And he shows you the movie, at least he does with me, maybe he'll do it different with you, because I already watched today, I watched it last night. And it's like, bang, I know what's going to happen, I'm good with that, let's go. Okay, he says go, he sends you, it's an apostolic uh, mandate. So, and he says, preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, he has all authority on heaven and earth, how about that for one? Okay, everything's his, the devil's beaten. The kingdom of God is within us, and we're to pray it into existence and release it upon the earth and expand his kingdom. In a nutshell, just real quick. Okay? That's not real theological. It's not, you know, it doesn't hit all the cylinders, but it gives you enough to picture. You kind of go, oh, I can see that. So, Luke 24, 47. This is the call upon our life. It's a big picture. This is the big picture, folks. To walk out the full potential of the call is you have to have a big picture to look at. Okay? The big picture is the, the great commissioning. Luke 24, 47 says, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So you know what? This is kind of added to it. You go and you do all the acts and all the works. You know, you, you cast out demons, you lay hands on the sick, you raise the dead, and then you go and do this. And that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. So you bring it in, and there's, there's truth. There's a little additional freedom that has to be. You're dealing with, with, with physical issues. Now he's talking about spiritual issues. You see the, see the transition here? You see I've shifted to another gear? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Pick up serpents. If you drink deadly poison, all these things in my name, that's, that's natural things. Those are physical things. Now he's taking it to the deeper because you can do all kinds of physical things and do all kinds of physical things and healings and things like that, but if the sickness is from within in the spirit realm, that fruit will continue to grow out of the sickness that's in within the heart. It's the spiritual sickness, okay? So this is part of the big picture of the Grand Commission. The Great Commission is to make sure that physically and spiritually that those around you, that he sets you into their lives, that they're spiritually and physically healed. So you bring it in. Repentance, and I like that, and I taught a long time ago about the next one, the remittance of sin. And I may have to revisit that because that's a really powerful teaching, all right? But it is, those two things deal with the inward parts, the inward injuries of what we've carried. And really, this is the area where identity comes from, folks. Yeah, I, there's one that understands that. Anybody else? This is where your identity comes from. It's that spiritual thing that you've been imprinted, okay? And God's all about getting that stuff remitted because it is. It's a, a, a repentance why is it a repentance when you have a false identity? Well, you've embraced the lie, all right? And God needs to get that lie out so there's room for the truth, amen? All right, I'll tell you, for the longest time, I looked at myself like I looked when I was 12 years old. I was about five foot four and about 175 pounds. And that was the image that I would see every time I looked at myself. I don't, don't look like that now. But for a long time, that was the impression I felt of myself, and the Lord said, man, you're, I mean, and if, when I hit 12, I went from being 5'4 to about, you know, 5'11. And I was still the same weight, but I still carried the lie of what I looked like. And I carried rejection. All right? So I was living out of not the fullness of the potential. I was living out of a lie. And God had to come in and cut that off. I mean, it was, you know, there were some traumatic things that I went through. Hallelujah, he healed me of those things, of being picked on. And I didn't do it always correct. You know, once I got big, people picked on me. I hurt them. Okay? I fixed the wagon. And then I broke the axles. <laughs> okay? So, but, you know, God had to do a lot of work in me to get those areas within me. Because I was big and I was a bruiser and I could take a shot physically. But the spiritual little boy inside was trapped in a, in a wounded vessel that cried out for identity. So that's why it's important for us to walk in this, the remittance and, and, and repentance, so that truth can come in. Bless the Lord. And it's, this is all based on God's kingdom. 
the kingdom truth of how his kingdom is. And, and uh, I'm, I'm going to, this year, God really wants to start teaching on the kingdom here and, and some of the things that how a corporate body steps into the kingdom in, in a powerful way. So those are the things that I'm looking into this year. So the next thing, number one, a call upon our life. Number two, the full potential, to live out of the full potential. Full potential means physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, emotionally, financially, and having all of those in your environment, the place where you live. Okay, I'll go over them real quick. Physically, full potential is physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, emotionally, financially, all of them wrapped together and living it out in the environment where God has planted you to grow. That is what full potential in a nutshell, that I could chew it down and boil it down to what it was for me. Okay, You may have full potential, a different understanding, but that's how he gave it to me. That as I go through physically, everything's full potential. Man, I am the best I can be at this age, this body, the way I've, put, the way I've abused it all my life, and I'm full, at the full potential. Okay? Mentally, I am as sharp. I've prayed up. I've made everything the, the best I could to make sure mentally I'm tracking properly. I make sure I get enough sleep. I make sure I get enough you know, you know, time of resting. I, I, I uh, use my mind. You know, I do those little crossword puzzles. I keep it sharp, whatever that means. Spiritually, man, I'm all about making sure I'm spiritually prepared. Socially, you know what? I don't want to be an introvert. I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling the desire that God has for me in the social life. It's okay. Okay, I'm not going to the bars and hanging out down there. That's not part of my social life. Okay, but I'm socially, I try to be as connective as possible. Emotionally, I got to be emotionally, you know, uh, healthy. It's is a, it's a when you're un, uh, emotionally unhealthy. Oh my gosh, we all know we've been there at one time or another. Emotions will take you for a ride you don't want to go on. It's like getting on the top of a big hill, okay, in a wagon with no brakes and saying, "Okay, let's go," because it'll take you places you don't want to go, and then you go flying off the road and crash. Financially, we do the very best we can. You know, we, we, we give our offerings, we give our first fruits, uh, those sort of things. So we make sure financially we're as wise as possible. And to do all of this in the environment, the environment is where you're at, where you're living. So you're living the full potential. Potential, what is potential? It's an adjective. It means capable, capable of being, okay? That means I have the potential or ability, okay, I'm able, I'm capable of being that. I'm capable of being, but not yet in existence. That's what your potential is. I have the ability to get there, but I'm not there yet. I'm extending, I'm stretching towards it, I'm doing all I can to reach out to get to that goal. It's a latent ability. It's hidden sometimes. All right, potential a lot of times is latent. All right, I have a body built, my build... Um, if I would have t- taken time to do what I should have, well, I'm not going to say should have. If I would have taken time when I was younger to build muscle, I have a frame. My, my bones are built big enough to carry muscle like Tom, but I never wanted to do that. Now, when I played football, I was pretty trim and I was pretty fit for that, okay? But I had the f- potential, a latent potential because of the way I was built. My rib cage and the way my bones are put together, I was built to carry heavy loads. I just chose to go another route. So I took that potential, and I left it kind of latent, never pursued it. All right? But that's something I always knew. I look, you, know, you look at my son, God bless him, unless there's a miracle, I don't think he's ever going to look like Tom. <laughs> Not, you know. I mean, what more can I say? So you know, that's, those are the things, he, and Dave understands that. So, but this is what, you know, God gives us abilities and potential. Yeah, he is. He's like that in the spirit, that's for sure. He's all over that. Yes. So, number two, under potential, it means having possibility, capability, or power. I like that. There's an empowerment that goes with potential. 
So we're capable of, we have the power and possibility of, and number three, it is sometimes an unrealized ability or capacity, an unrealized ability. A good friend of mine, Justin Sparks, who's an artist over in Depot Bay, the one I like all of his pictures, I got bunches of them. He, he worked at a zoo, and he was, a, you know, his mom works in the Fort Worth Zoo, and I think he worked some time there, and he was at the Colorado, uh, I think it was Colorado, he was in the zoo. And then he came and moved up here, and his brother got him a paint set. And he, was, he wasn't a kid anymore. But suddenly an unrealized ability sprang forth in him. And if you've seen any of the pictures like that eagle back in my office, he did that. He didn't know he was able to do that. All of a sudden, boom, there it was. See, so there's times in your life you're going to all of a sudden just trip over an ability that has been unrealized in your life. I like those. It doesn't matter how old you are. If it springs on you, now's the time to live in it. I, don't, I mean, if I'm 99 years old and I'm getting ready to be 100 tomorrow and all of a sudden God says, man, you're a race car driver, I'm going, yeah, let's go. <laughs> NASCAR, here I come. I'll be the scariest grandpa out there. Because you know what? I'm all about the unrealized ability. Hallelujah. All right, as a noun, potential means the inherent ability. I like that. An inherent ability. As an adjective, it's a, an unrealized one. As a noun, it's an inherent ability. You have inherited something from your Heavenly Father, amen? You've inherited a potential, an ability that He put in you, and it is alive. That's right. It is alive. When that dream of this of Cornerstone Christian Fellowship was put into my spirit in, in January 23rd of 2010 or 1990, it was alive and it was it was moving inside of me for 20 years. Okay, that was the inherent ability that he put into me to birth this and, and to walk with me. So it's an inherent ability or capacity for growth, development. And I like this one. Or coming into being. Coming into being. Whew. Do you believe you have that kind of potential in you? That when you step out in faith, you, it comes into being? Understand how that works? A step of faith is giving you the potential and it brings it into being. It engages heaven. It engages faith. It brings the life of God, and he goes, now. And he breathes life into that because he sees your faith or those that are around you. Bless the Lord. Also, no, it is something. And oh, I like this one too. I, love, I just love to read this. Something possessing the capacity for growth or development. That's the noun's version of potential. It is something possessing the capacity for growth or development. It is the little teeny atom that hasn't been split yet to release an explosive power of God. That little atom inside of you. Okay? Not the fallen atom, the atom that was spoken, designed, and handmade by God that will release the fullness. Because why did Christ die? To bring us back to relationship as if before the fall that we could walk out on this earth that potential, to walk in him in the, the cool of the day, to have the ability to rule with authority, all right, to subdue the earth, be prosperous and multiply. This is really what we're called back to do. That's why he did this. He bring us back into that kind of a face-to-face -face relationship. All right, the next part. Living at a level, level of full Living at a level of the fullness in this area. All right? To live in the, out of the full potential. So the potential is the ability, all this stuff, to make things release, to make them, you know, the latent one, the, the inherent one, to live in the fullness of that. All right? you, may, you have all the blocks, but now you want to live at the very top, the crest of the wave. All right? And when you're out there paddling on a surfboard, not that I've ever done it, okay, you feel the wave coming, there's a momentum, and you get on the very front of the wave and it kind of just pushes you along. All right? You're just going kind of slow because you just kind of there's a slow momentum. But then when you start living into the fullness, you're starting to crawl up the wave. The wave's starting to overtake you. All right? And as you as God overtakes you in your life, 
the speed of your movement of where you're going starts to really catch up with you. And you start to feel the surge of God. I don't know if you all understand what I'm talking about, but I, this is what I normally go in. I'll get a, a drift of what God wants to do, and I'll start feeling momentum pressing against me from behind in the spirit. And then as I start re- recognizing, oh, there's some, God's moving here, I've got to align with it. Because if you're on a surfboard and you're sideways and that wave comes, what happens? Ah! You go this way. <laughs> Okay? So you've got to align yourself with what God's doing. You feel the momentum. You feel the surge of power underneath you, underneath, the, underneath your wings. Okay, you align because you know that wave's going this way. Okay, you go, okay, God, which way are you going? Okay, you align yourself with it. And then as the wave catches you, the momentum of heaven catches you, and you start going up the wave. Why do you go up? Well, God brings you up to a higher calling. He says, come on up here. He wants you at the very peak of what he's doing. He wants you riding the peak of that wave. So as you go up, your faith is building. What happens is you start to go up the wave, you get a higher vantage point. You get to see from a higher place. You're not down looking across the water like this. You're coming up, and all of a sudden you can start seeing, oh, hey, I need to stay away from there because there's rocks over there. Uh, over here is, oh, there's a shark. Okay, we're going this way. Okay, and then you can direct. You're in the flow, but you start dodging stuff. And then when you hit the peak, it doesn't matter what's in front of you when you're on the peak because you're so high up. Everything that's before you is way down below you, and that that wave will carry you over the reef, over the sharks, over all the other garbage because you're on the very peak. He's called you to the high place of his wave, the wave of his momentum, the wave of his purpose. Okay, did that picture kind of hit you okay? All right, good. So living at a level of full in this arena. Number one, full to the point of overflowing or bursting. This is what I'm talking about, living out of the fullness, living out of the fullness. There's such a flow in you that you're bursting forth, all right? It's, it's that whole thing where I'm living a be, uh, beyond just scratching out a menial lifestyle. Living to the full point of overflowing or bursting. And number two, as well as you can in every given moment or opportunity, you're grasping that. All right, there's a fullness, you're beyond bursting, you're not just a full cup, you're overflowing. All right, and in the past, you've heard me talk about living in the fullness of his spirit. When the spirit is coming out of you at forceful, the enemy can't get towards you because the force of the spirit going out washes and pushes him back. So when you're living in an abundance of outflow, the enemy's like trying to be swimming upstream. The, f- the more he's coming at you, the more release of the presence of God out of your life has to be there to propel him backwards. That's living in the fullness. When It's like when Peter would walk down the street and his shadow would touch people. He lived out of the fullness, and what happened? It spilled over and healed people when the shadow went by him. All right? Those are greater works, don't you think, than what Christ did? You never heard about Christ's shadow doing, oh, hey, and they all jumped up and ran away because the shadow passed. But see, he said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Peter walks down the street, and a shadow brings healing. I, could, and, now, I, I don't know if this is, this is just speculation, but if he were, there was that kind of healing in his shadow, imagine what happened, like, like maybe this is just, just having fun. Imagine him walking down the street, and there's dead grass, and he walks by, and all of a sudden, bing, Grass turns green, you know? I don't know. I wasn't there, but just I like having fun like that, okay? You th- just think about it. if there was that much vibrancy of the outflow of the presence of God, you know? I mean, it was just, wow. It's it, it just fun. I, I like having fun with him. Mm. I'm going to have to hold on that one. But I'm going to give you something to look at. What happens with the Great Commission? I'm going to, if, draw three rings. One big ring, one smaller ring, and then a little ring in the center. Because I don't have a board up here and I don't have time to mess with that. I want you to do the three rings. One big ring, a smaller ring, and then in the very center a small circle. Because I'm going to show you how this works. I want to show you how living out of the fullness of your potential looks like and works. The very center. No, inside each other. Do, do, do. That's a, well, no, this is good. This is good. I'm, uh, you see, this is usually I'm, I, I, I have the teaching thing on me today. Okay? So I put a big ring, and then a smaller ring, and then a little ring inside. A little circle. Yeah, like a target. That'll work. Okay, a target. Yes. So this is, this is what he showed me. The Great Commission is the center seed, S-E-E-D. 
So I took a little arrow and I put it to the center circle. And I wrote over here on the little line, it says, the Great Commission. It is like a seed in the very center of the call upon your life. It carries the DNA of the kingdom. Now, when this, as the Spirit releases this inside of you, you're gonna, it's going to make you gyrate inside. The Great Commission, which is go into all the world, because I have authority over heaven and earth, go into all the world and do all this stuff. That is the seed that has the DNA of the kingdom that he puts in the middle of who you are. Just a seed. Now, from that little circle in the center... Draw little arrows going out towards the next ring. Hallelujah, Lord. The next ring is the individual call. Now, the individual call is what God has put inside of you that that engages with the DNA of the seed of the Great Commission. So you have the seed of the Great Commission. Excuse me. And then the individual call is engaged into it. It ties in and draws off the power and authority of life for you as an individual. Does that make sense? Because that's where your identity is transferred. DNA carries, the spiritual DNA carries your identity. He said, go into all the world. You go. You go. You go. He's not talking, he's like, you don't stand there and go, yeah, he's talking to him. Nope, I'm out of this one. I'm exempt. Nope, there is no exempt in status in this one, okay? There is no exempt status in this one. DNA, seed of the Great Commission, here's your calling. It clicks in and engages like a gear, I guess you could say. It could work like a gear, okay? As this one turns, it makes you move. It directs and empowers you. It magnifies what's in your life. And the outer circle is the full potential and overflowing living. And that put little arrows going out, big arrows going out, because your potential is always expanding as more of the flow of the DNA from the Kingdom Great Commission seed impacts your life. You engage it more, and it causes the outflow and the full potential to flow outwards and touch more people. That's where you want to live. You want to live in the full, out of the full potential. That's where life Kingdom life happens on that last outside circle. It might have gone right over your heads. I'm praying it didn't because the Holy Spirit will get, when you get, as the Holy Spirit lets you understand this, you will live from a different place. You will live from a different understanding. You will live from a mind of Christ, not the mind of the world. And you will experience this. It is possible. It is what I am living in in Jesus' name. I am living in that place right now the fullness of my potential in this moment in time, in this, at 11.30 on Sunday, January 12th, right now I am living out of the fullness of my potential. And I proclaim that in Jesus' name over my life. And I will not receive anything less than his very best. These are the things I go through every morning. To get out of bed and face, the, it's to face things, sometimes I have to say that. Other days I'm coming out of there going, yeah, I'm going to get it. Let's go, Lord. Let's, hallelujah, Jesus, let's go do some stuff. Whoa, glory, sneezing. Okay, then there's days I'm going, okay, covers over the head. Okay, yeah, the dog's here, Patty's here. Good, I'm safe, man, I'm all right. Man. Okay. But those are the days I have to stir it up. I have to, get to, I have to go in there and I start looking for that DNA. What's the DNA of heaven saying to me today? Hallelujah. What's my identity? Ah, I start going through those things. It's like, uh, I think it was Patricia King said something in, in one of her recent ones. It says, do you wake up in the morning with Grumpy? I went, <laughs> well, you know, if I wake up, sometimes Grumpy's with me. Yes, sir. I'm always there. Because wherever you go, there you are. Remember? We know that one. Wherever you go, there you are. So if you're, if you're hanging with Grumpy, well, God bless you. Go find Sneezy or Happy. <laughs> Little Dopey isn't too bad either. So... Hallelujah. So you want to live out of the fullness of your potential. Bring me to Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. We're going to talk talk about activation of the kingdom in our lives. Activation of the kingdom in our lives. This is where that, that seed with the DNA of the kingdom inside of us starts to go 
and starts cracking and moving. And as we're engaged with that, we, we agree with it. It takes agreement, okay? You can sit there, and if you don't engage a gear, the gear will spin, spin, and spin. This one will just sit there because this one's all turning, but this one's not engaged. So there's no movement. It's, it takes an engagement of these twos to hit, and then, then everything starts moving. So we need to activate we need to activate the kingdom in our lives. Matthew 13, 31 and 32 says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Now, we've heard this thing a bazillion times, but not in the context I'm giving it to you today. I want you to recognize that seed of the kingdom that he talks about there. God puts that seed in you. This is the seed of the Great Commission. It carries the DNA. All right? It's about the advancement of the kingdom. It is about living in the kingdom. It's about releasing the kingdom. All those things that we've heard spoken so many times, but it, it takes an activation. Where's my little thing? Here it is. So we come to this place. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Now mustard, I, I want to just, let me make sure I do this right. Yes, that's good. All right. A mustard seed is not the same as we have here in the United States. You know mustard, the mustard we have here, it's like a little scrawny little plant. The mustard seeds over in, in, in that area, over in the Middle East, they actually are like a tree. I mean, you can climb in these critters. All right, they're big, branchy things. There's pictures. I mean, it was amazing. You know, I, I always thought a mustard seed. Okay, well, that's that little plant I see out in the fields, okay? And I've seen the little teeny seeds and everything. But these are real trees. And I'm sure Mike could tell us about that. He's seen pictures. You know, they're, they're a tree. And it really grows big. It's thick, branched and stuff. All right. Patty, if you'd bring up uh, Luke 13, 18, and 19. And we'll probably bounce around between these scriptures for a couple of minutes. Luke 13, 18, and 19. Because I really want to drive this home. Hallelujah. Luke 13, 18, and 19. All right, here we go again. What is the kingdom of God like, and what shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in the branches. All right, I'm going to give you one, that last one. These are all about the same thing. Mark 4, 30, and 32. They're all talking about the same thing. I want to just really drive this home. Because this is where we want to, I think I want to just tie it up with this one today. We'll see. That's Mark 4, 30 and 32. All right. Then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? I like pictures. It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds of the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Okay, now I like that one. We'll leave that one up last. The activation of the kingdom in your life is dependent upon you. Nobody's running out of the building, so I guess I'm okay. I have just placed the responsibility where it belongs. The fivefold ministry is to do what? Equip the saints for the works of the ministry. Okay? We train up. That's what the fivefold ministry does. It equips the saints for the works of the ministry. It is your responsibility. No one is exempt. Amen? Amen. So. This is where we start engaging what it is. Mm. It is sown on the ground. The other ones say he sowed it in his garden. A garden, I want you to see it as a garden because he sees you as a beautiful place. He sees you healthy. He doesn't see you full of weeds. He's taken care of you. He's worked within you. And then he takes this seed of his kingdom and he puts it inside of you. All right? What do, what do you do with a seed? I mean, sometimes you have to just throw it in the ground and you walk away. Some farmers farm that way. But if you have a garden, what do you do to a garden? It begins with a T. Tender, loving care. You tend to your garden. So what? 
God sees you as a garden. He puts a seed into you, and he tends it with loving care. Why does he do that? To keep the weeds out. Remember the story? You know, the seeds sown along the hard ground. The weeds come up and choke it. Da 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 da. That whole story. I don't want to steal anything in case Tom has something for the future. But I want you to know that seed is precious, and he watches over it. He tends the garden. He doesn't keep going out and digging, pulling the seed up to see if it's growing. No, he knows it's growing. He leaves it in the ground, but he keeps the weeds away, keeps the birds of the air away. Because in this story, what happens? The birds eventually come down here, and they nest in it. Okay? That's interesting. Just think about that. The same birds that would steal the seed for a day will come back and nest in the tree if the kingdom's done as we let that happen. That's just a little side note. Let the Holy Spirit tell you that one. So anyhow, he nurtures that seed. He watches over it. He waters it. He fertilizes it. He makes sure everything in the environment is okay. All right? You're not a purple thistle. You're not a dandelion. You're something beautiful that carries the DNA of his kingdom. It carries his heart. It will reflect and impact just as he does. He is imprinting upon you who he is so that you will carry out his likeness on this earth. Amen? Amen. All right. So, but when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs. And I like this next part. It shoots out large branches. There is extensions and expansions that are to be a part of you that are sustainable branches of who you are, sustainable branches of the kingdom through you, all right? He's the root, okay? He's done, I mean, we know the whole thing about, you know, we're abiding in Christ and all those sort of things, but I want you to see how the kingdom grows in you. There's offshoots that spring out, boom, boom, and they go to specific things, all right? Your calling has many different um, attributes and abilities to touch different areas. It's not just a, you know, I mean, there's, there's some trees that just go straight up like a palm tree and go, Broop. okay, they're okay. I'm not real thrilled with palm trees, okay? But if that's the only thing you got around, okay. But then you go like the sequoia trees, and they go up, and then they go, boom, and they're massive. I mean, you stand next to a sequoia tree, it's like, I'm pretty insignificant because it's like 300 feet tall and like 30 feet around. I mean, when we took the kids down to the Trees of Mystery, that was, I mean, wow, those are impressive trees. You stand up on them, the ones that are laying down, you're like two, two stories in the air looking down. They're so big. They're huge. But see, he wants to bring that potential, the fullness, and he shoots out large branches. Why? To touch people, to expand his kingdom, to release things. See, there's life inside this DNA that he releases through you. When you go up and you touch people, all right, <laughs> and you just, and you're extending the flow of what's inside of you. See? And then you just release blessings. And you go, oh, there's some joy. Let that guard your heart. See, there's branches that he flows through you. Yeah. Okay? And then he comes up like this. He goes, no. I want to bring you in. See? And he holds us. And he releases joy and life and hope and faith and ideas into us like that. See? See, that's, that's the branches. And the more you do that, the thicker those branches become. See? You start walking in this thing and you release that. Hallelujah. Amen, Kathy. That's what we're all to do. What I just did is what you are all designed to do. And it, it, it is just, well, I'll tell you, when you, when you feel the flow of the I guess I could say the sap of the Spirit going through you. Man, you can get heady. You can get heady on that because the joy of the Lord is your strength when that's because the joy of the Lord's coming out of you. And, you, and the, the love that you express and extend is a beautiful thing. So that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. I like that. The same critters that would inflict pain in your life earlier as you come into the fullness, I want you to hear this, as you come into the fullness of the likeness of Christ, your enemies will what? Become your friends. Those that would have come in and destroyed and taken your seed will change their heart because they recognize there's a blessing underneath that. There's a blessing. I can rest in the shade of that. And not only can I rest, I can nest there. That, 
Come on. Can you see the potential of the heavenly kingdom coming through you where your enemies will come back to you and say, I was a, a butthead for what I did to you. I am sorry. Can I come and just rest and then maybe even nest here? That nesting means living, birthing, bringing newness of life. Okay? He has entrusted each of us with this seed. And what are we supposed to do? Live out of the fullness of that seed engaged in our lives. I'm going to stop right there because I've brought you to a beautiful place and only you and he can walk it out from there. We're going we're gonna to go back into this next week, but I want to stop right there because he has brought you to himself in a beautiful place. Holy Spirit, I thank you for what you just did. That was beautiful. My heart's desire is for the full engagement of all that, I, that we know how to do to live out of the fullness, the fullness, the fullness of the potential of the call upon our life. In this moment, wow. Now, Father, expound to each of us this week how that happens with you. You have all authority on heaven and earth. You have sent us. You have released us. You've released your kingdom DNA within us to impact us, but to outflow from us because out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. And the fullness of that is the spring, the wellhead this, the, of the holy of holies within us. And Lord, I ask you to expand the channel. Open up that waterway inside of us, those waterways, where it will flow uninhibited to us, in us, and through us for your glory, for your joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow.